Now the God of hope fill you with all the joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We find ourselves in between two feasts regarding the Immaculate Conception. Of course, Thursday being the Immaculate Conception. And last Sunday, with it being the Feast of the Miraculous Medal. And so today, I thought I'd tell you a story about this powerful sacramental. In 1943, right in the United States, in Mississippi, there was a black man in prison. His name was Claude Newman, and he was on death row awaiting his execution. His crime was a crime of passion, but a crime also based in love that he would suffer for. His grandmother, whom raised him and he, whom he loved more than anybody else in the world, she had remarried and had an abusive second husband. And not being able to, to stand watching his grandmother suffer that way any longer, he took the man's life. And so he waited in prison, awaiting the end of his own life. Now, Claude was one who was truly ignorant. He had no religious upbringing whatsoever. And he was ignorant to the point that he was illiterate. But one day, as he was in prison, he saw another inmate walking by. And he saw that the inmate had upon him this shiny silver medallion hanging from his neck. And he was curious about it. So Claude asked the man, what is that that hangs around your neck? The man, being bitter due to his own imprisonment, took it off and threw it on the ground, cursing, saying, you take it, I don't want it anymore. And so Claude picked up the medal and put it around his neck. He had no idea what he had found there. But that night, he was awoken from a deep sleep by a gentle shaking of his wrist. When he woke, he opened his eyes and he looked and he saw before him, as he described, the most beautiful woman he had ever seen in his entire life. And he looked at her and the lady spoke to him. And he, she said, if you want me to be your mother and you desire to be my son, then send for a Catholic priest and he'll teach you all that you need to know. And with that, the lady disappeared and Claude began to scream. He thought it was a ghost and so he cried out, ghost, ghost, there's a ghost in my cell. And the people came running and said, what do you mean there's a ghost around you? He said, I just saw a specter, a lady who came to see me. And he said, what do they tell you? She said, well, for one, she was the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen. And two, she told me that I should call for a Catholic priest. So the guards the next day did just that. They called for a priest. A priest named Father O'Leary came. And he sat down and talked to Claude about what he had witnessed. Claude relayed to him step by step all that he had that had transpired the day before and hearing it the priest said well i don't know everything about that but what you wear around your neck is called a miraculous medal and if you were meant to call me perhaps it is to learn about the catholic faith that i am a priest in the church of and claude said well that'll be fine i wouldn't mind learning about the faith. And so the priest began catechetical studies with Claude. In fact, having heard what had transpired, four other prisoners actually joined Claude in studying the catechism with the priest. And the priest would come and he would give a little bit of instruction, realizing that he had to take it slowly and simply with the ignorance of the man. And Claude, all the while, sat very quietly, paid attention and listened to the instructions all the way through. Several weeks into catechism, unexpectedly, Claude blurted out, 
in surprise to the priest. Father O'Leary had started talking about confession, to teach confession to the inmates. And Claude shouted with joy. He said, oh, I know about that. And the priest looked at him stunned. He said, the lady told me that when we go to confession, what happens is we really kneel before her son on the cross, not the priest. And when we are truly sorry for our sins and we confess to him, it is his blood which flows down from the cross and all over us, and it cleanses away all of our sins. Father O'Leary stared at him, mouth agape, completely in shock by that, stunned into silence as he was. Claude, for his part, thought that he had done something wrong and made the priest angry. And so he began to apologize. Oh, but Father, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to blurt out so rudely like that. And the priest, Father O'Leary says, Oh no, Claude, you're not wrong. I'm just so surprised that your knowledge of the sacrament, how did you come to that? He said, the lady told me about it. And so the priest took Claude aside from the other four and he said, has the lady come to see you again? And Claude said, oh yes, she has. And she taught me about confession. And then Claude said something <coughs> incredible. He said, she also told me that if you doubt it, I was to remind you that in 1940, you were laying in a ditch in Holland and you made a vow to her that she is still waiting for you to take up. With this, the priest was really stunned to silence. He remembered that day very well. He was in the war, after all, as a chaplain, and he was fell under extremely heavy fire in 1940 in Holland. And there he was in a foxhole thinking all hope was lost completely and that surely he would die. And as he hunkered down in the mud, keeping his head below the rim, he begged Our Lady to find a way to save his life, and that he vowed to her that if she saw him out of this battle, that he would build a church in honor of her Immaculate Conception. It was this vow that he had not fulfilled. He would, in a few years, fulfill it in the end. With that, Father O'Leary continued the catechism until Claude was all done. He was baptized and he received the sacraments most devoutly and was ready near for his own execution. Four days before his execution was his baptismal day. And so with that, he was asked about a final request before he was to be executed. Claude told the warden, he said, all my friends, and even the jailer, they, they're all shook up. He said, they don't understand what's going to happen. They think they, need, they, they are sad because I'm to die, but they don't comprehend. It's just my body that's going to die. And I will actually go and join Our Lady forever. And for that, I'm very happy. So for my last request, I want to cheer up my friends and the jailers. Let's have a party. And so that's exactly what happened. Cake and ice cream were brought into the jail and they all sat around and laughed and had a great time. And uh, it was a final, wonderful final meal for Claude. And the next day he woke up with great joy and sprang out of his bed and couldn't wait for the executioner to come to bring him to the execution room. With a big smile, he walked down the hallway and sat down in the electric chair. But then something extraordinary happened. A guard came running down the hall of the execution chambers, crying out loudly and said, wait, wait, the governor wants to re-examine the case and he's granted a stay of two weeks for execution. Claude, burst into tears and started sobbing in bitterly and uncontrollably. 
The priest, Father O'Leary, went to him and said, Why are you crying, Claude? What is wrong? And again, Claude said that all he wanted to do was go and see the lady. And that if the governor is not allowing him to be executed, what was it that he had done wrong? Why was he being punished and being made to wait two more weeks for this great occasion? Father O'Leary put his arm around his shoulders and comforted him and told him, he said, Claude, it's not necessarily that you've done something wrong, but did you ever happen to think Our Lady wants a little bit more out of you? What do you mean, Father? Well, sometimes we're meant to do something against our own will because it is for a greater good. And maybe Our Lady wants you to offer up the next two weeks, which you wish that you were already joined with her, as a sacrifice. Well, what should I sacrifice for, Father? He said, well, you know very well, there's another inmate in here. He was a lifelong Catholic, but he has despaired. He has fallen away from the faith. In fact, no, he hates anything to do with religion whatsoever. He certainly will lose his soul if he doesn't convert back. Pray for him. Offer your sacrifice for him. Cheered by this, Claude said he would do that. And the whole two weeks long, he prayed regularly for the conversion of his fellow inmate. And then finally, two weeks later, he was executed. Father O'Leary said he never saw somebody so happy in his life as he had seen Claude sitting in an electric chair. Yet, with that being done and Claude being buried, time passed by until finally the other inmates turned for execution had come up and he was led kicking and screaming to the execution chamber. And when he was sat down in the chair, he was asked if he wanted to talk to a priest. He flatly refused. He uttered blasphemies for all to hear. He spit upon a cross when it was presented to him. And it seemed like he was going to go to into, into eternity with the same hatred in his heart. And then, all of a sudden, just before they were to pull the plug, uh, to pull the switch on him, he looked into the corner, an empty corner in the execution chamber. And he started staring into it. And then he screamed, a most horrific scream. And as he screamed, he cried out, Bring me the priest! Bring me the priest! Father Larry was rushed into the chamber and went to kneel beside the man. And the man said, I want to confess my sins. And he there, with tears in his eyes, he unloaded his entire soul on the priest for all to see who were there to witness the execution without any shame or hesitation whatsoever, unburdened himself of all the wrong he had done his entire life. With that, he was absolved of his sins, and Father O'Leary asked him, what was it that you saw in the corner of the execution chamber? The man said, as he was sitting there, he looked over, and to his surprise, he saw Claude standing with the Blessed Virgin Mary. And as they stared at him, and he refused one last time to confess his sins, Claude looked at Our Lady and asked her, show him his place in hell, just a glimpse that he may save his soul. And with that, he was shown the spot that he was to burn forever. And it horrified him so much that he immediately cried out for the priest. And so the conversion was gained. The miraculous medal is just that. It is a sacramental known for procuring miracles. It is a sacramental so powerful because Our Lady gave it to us to use. And under that title, the Immaculate Conception, she wields great power before the throne of God because it is something particular only to herself. She alone is conceived without sin. She alone was chosen from all of creation to be the mother of the Messiah to redeem mankind. She alone 
and stand before God completely sinless for her whole entire life. Not only that, but one who had, was full of grace and ever increased in grace all her life long. And so, with that absolute pristine purity of soul, one that has never in the slightest of ways ever even given in to a small temptation to offend our Lord, she is truly loved above all the rest of creation in that way. And so, when she, the sinless one, intercedes on behalf of us, the fallen, <coughs> Our Lord can't help but look at her and see that true cleanliness and godliness and goodness of her and not be pleased. And so it is through her intercession that so many great things happen. If you ever have the opportunity to go and see the shrine of the miraculous medal in France and Paris, one thing that will strike you before you ever even walk into the church is that there are placards, stone tiles, covering the wall of the long walkway outdoors, all of which give thanks to Our Lady for miracles granted. It is a mere small fraction of prayers answered on behalf of the Immaculate Conception. Yet it is a wonder to see so many. We pray to Our Lady not with just simple hope, but with confidence in our prayers being answered. The sacramentals that we have received through the church, we use with the same confidence, knowing that nothing is impossible with Almighty God. The good that we seek after, do not try to obtain it merely by your own doing, but turn to those who are so much greater of achieving the seemingly impossible than us. Use the tools that heaven has given us to gain more souls for that destination which we strive after ourselves. As we approach the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, do not think of it as another day or another burden to show up, to drive in in the middle of your busy day to come to Mass again. But rejoice at what a great treasure we have in Our Lady there, Immaculate, our greatest intercessor, our mother, our guardian, and our protectress. Heaven. Thank you. Bless you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.